You know, we have really assembled a show for you today. I think you're going to love it. Remember when you first got sick? Maybe it was depression, migraine headaches, arthritis, lupus, cancer. Just a step before that, did it really all start in the gut? Were you horribly constipated or diarrhea or gut problems? Dr. Roby Mitchell and Dr. John Trowbridge, two of my dear friends for many, many years, are going to be here to discuss these issues with me. And then are you on the Kaufman-2 diet so you can have a little coffee? Kyle Drew is going to teach you how to turn, and this is great, how to turn coffee into a meal. Okay, and then finally today, we see so many polysymptomatic patients, doctors here today. What does that mean and how can we help them? All that and more on this show. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Okay, you saw coming in, you saw Dr. Roby Mitchell and Dr. John Trowbridge. We go way, way back. So I'm reminded in talking with these guys of someone who takes their car to a mechanic. What's wrong with it? It doesn't start. So he takes the wheels off. They're okay. He takes transmission out. They're okay. He takes a windshield out. It's okay. He takes the interior out. It's okay. You were low on gas. <laughs> Folks, sometimes <laughs> I think you were out of gas. Sometimes I think we look at the human body. These guys are both physicians, both medical doctors. I think we look at the the body that way and shame on us for doing that in science you had some great analogies both of you guys on what we're doing wrong in medicine and how it can be fixed well so again yeah we take this approach that when you have a skin rash right that that is the disease that's not the disease that's the oil light coming on and the smart thing to do when the oil light comes on is just to put back oil right and then the light goes off and we can do that with diabetes, we can do that with high cholesterol, we can do that with high blood pressure or skin rashes, uh, autoimmune disease, right? I can reverse all of those all, all day long, right? But economically, what keeps currency going is to try to blow out the smoke, right, and not put out the fire, right? Not address the fire at all. Right? Not address the right. fire at all, because once you put out the fire, right, then that stops the economic flow. Do you okay, tell me in your heart, do you guys really feel this is what's going on? It's a turf kind of thing in medicine today? Oh, gosh, I, I can't say it's a turf kind of thing. I can say they jealously guard theirs. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you take care of some problem that a specialist should have taken care of, well, slap you silly. Because you're not a specialist. Yeah, exactly. We're, now, we're, again, we are process-oriented in, in medical practice. Did you go through all the steps that we say the standard of care involves? It doesn't matter whether you got better, okay? It only matters did you go through the steps. We should be product-oriented, okay? Know the cause, fix the cause, then it's over. You're done. Hence the fire and the smoke, right? That's what you're referring exactly. to. Exactly. Right. So the patient comes in with ringing in the ear, migraine, headaches, and skin, mm -hmm. but the fire is in the gut. Exactly. Right. Find it and fix it. So what do you do with patients like these? So we have a, I, I have basically a three-legged stool, right, analogy that I, I use for them. And the first of that is nutrition. So you got to change what you eat. you got to stop throwing gasoline on the fire with the grains and the uh, sugar and the pasteurized milk, right? If you starve out those critters, right, the fungus, right, they go down and then the immune system stops reacting. The second thing is to, again, look at this intelligent design system such that if there's something that is supposed to be there, like vitamin A or vitamin D or thyroid hormone or hydrochloric acid, and it's not there, put it back, right? And the body will start to take care of itself. And then the third thing is, uh, so there'll be a four-legged stool, actually. So the third thing is to, if thyroid is low or uh, 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 progesterone is low or DHA is low or testosterone or any of these hormones, you got to put those back, right? The, those are God things also. Supplementally and, or injection? Uh, uh, whatever it takes, right? Okay. But, but many, much of it can be done over the counter you know, without a prescription. But then, then the fourth thing is to do the, uh, you know, the chelation and remove things that are not supposed to be there, right? How does that work, chelation? Pretty simple. We put in a, a medication. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. It's a drug, okay, that grabs hold of toxic metals, takes it out through the kidneys. That simple, okay? The problem is, is that it makes lots of things better because those toxic metals are interfering 
in systems all around the body. If it didn't have that much effect, there wouldn't be that much upset in the medical community about it. People begin coming off drugs as oh, opposed yes. to oh, going yes. on oh, more. Oh, routinely. I think you can think of it as the analogy, you know, as, as lead in the in the gas, right? Sure. I mean, the more Look lead you got in there, right? right. I mean, heavy metal, right? Then the worse it's going to be for your car, right? So he gets the lead out. <laughs> he gets the lead <laughs> out. There are, here's, do you know what the, uh, what's the book called? CPT code book? Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. AMA I, owns that, you know. They do? Yes. The American Medical? It's licensed. I cannot believe how many diagnoses there sure. are. Yeah. I only got two eyes, but there's got to be 28 pages on eye diseases, right. you know, and some, it, it is absolutely Is that left amazing. side or right side? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and Dr. Trowbridge, we're adding more. Yes. And you every, pick up the psychology book on codes. Right. It's on, we must find new smoke. Yes, we but have to find. I think Dr. Smoke. Mitchell has it right when he says there's only so many things that can go wrong with this car. Okay, there's a finite number of parts and a finite number number of problems. Okay, but with human beings, you can re-describe it in a different <laughs> right. way, and now it's a different illness. Right. You know, like like shopping cart itis or something. You know, it, it's human behavior that's based on the chemistry. The chemistry is based on the foods, the toxins, the the operation of the hormones, the energy system, the whole. Ball of wax. And so we're running from doctor to doctor to doctor. You know what my wish would be for all of you watching right now? That you're blessed enough to find a doctor like these two doctors, Dr. Trowbridge, Dr. Mitchell. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for what you do. You'll see them on our show from time to time, folks. And we put up their URLs, their information, their phone numbers, and so forth. Feel free to really uh, give them your business. We appreciate them very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you've been standing by just salivating, waiting for this. How do you turn coffee into an entire meal? Only Kyle can do this. Watch. Okay, I know how some of you are. You love your coffee still. My wife drinks coffee all the time. I am kind of a once a week at most kind of guy, but I know a lot of you are looking for ways of making coffee a bit different. Now our, uh, our good buddy Dave Asprey talks about his bulletproof coffee. It's been tested for mycotoxins and he adds butter into it and MCT oil and that's awesome. I do that a lot of times. Uh, but what I'd like to show you today is how to bring your coffee up to another level. That's what we keep doing. We keep going higher levels to find out how to make your coffee or your hot tea in the morning, because I know how some of you are. You like to put your hands around your mug and then take a picture and put it on Instagram. I know how you are, but, but, uh, but if we can turn that into more of a meal, something more sustaining, I think you're gonna get more out of it every day. So I'm just gonna do something simple today. We're gonna start with coffee, because a lot of you do coffee, but you can do tea. We're gonna do protein, believe it or not, fiber, don't, don't turn me off yet, fiber, some ghee, but any fat can do, it could be butter, it could be coconut oil, and some spice, some pumpkin pie spice for me today. I'll show you why in a minute, a little bit of salt. Now, the reason I put these out here is just to show you that there are so many options. These are all sweeteners. This is straight stevia, but all of these are sweeteners that, have, uh, that are stevia flavors, okay? Flavors sweetened with stevia, and here's just kind of an oil-based vanilla mix that uh, Chris and Cons told me about. And, uh, but putting them all together, it turns your morning coffee or tea into a meal without sacrificing any taste. So, do you know what I am going to start with? Something called caramel protein. Did you even know this existed? This is caramel protein. What I like to do is put two cups of coffee into my blender. That's right, coffee in the blender. Don't freak out, just give it a try. Here is caramel. Caramel protein, I've got a scoop in it and that's gonna give me about 23 grams of protein with my coffee. Changes the game a little bit in the mornings, right? You're scared of this, I know. Okay, this is fiber. 
Now it's not psyllium husk, gritty, whatever. This is acacia fiber. It's just what I've been using lately and I cannot believe how well it blends in the coffee. Now if you stirred it in, you're gonna have a disaster on your hands. Don't stir it in. Make sure and blend it in. Don't be afraid of the blender. I put a couple of tablespoons, you're scared, I know, a couple of tablespoons of the acacia fiber right on top. Then, how about ghee? Grass-fed ghee. This is like a clarified butter, all right? So those of you who like the Bulletproof, this will work. Yep, I'm touching it. I'm the only one drinking it, don't freak out. Here's the ghee, and I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of the pumpkin pie spice. This is just a, just a blended spice mix. Bum, 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 and I think I'll go a little bit bump, bump, bump more because you've got the cinnamon, the cloves, the cardamom, the nutmeg. All I'm hearing is antifungal, antifungal, antifungal. That's what I love about the pumpkin pie spice in addition to the fact that it tastes great. So let us blend. This will be for a second or so, okay? So just give it time and see how it tastes. Oh yeah, do you see how creamy that is? Oh, look at that steam. Oh yeah, you see it against the black shirt, don't you? This smells so good. Now you can do vanilla protein and some of these interesting uh, flavors sweetened with stevia, turn it into a cappuccino flavor or uh, a, a cinnamon flavor. You can do just so many different rich things, but this is caramel with a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. This isn't normally the glass you drink coffee in, but we do that for TV so you can see it. See, look how rich that is. We got steaming up the cup. Now, let's give it a try. It, it, it's so, it, this is so sweet and so good, but it's got the fat, it's got the fiber, it's got the protein, no carbs in this one actually. And you've got yourself actually a meal, but you can still put your arms around it, your hands around it, and take your Instagram photos and show all your friends, and you never have to let them know, this is Kaufman Diet Coffee. You know, last thing you want when you're sick is someone else invading your body, right? Are there non-invasive tests available? Jenny will teach you that, and then after that, the polysymptomatic patient, I have everything wrong with me, is their help. Watch this. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. More and more physicians are recommending electrodermal testing as a non-invasive, time-honored way to find imbalances in the body before they have time to manifest into a diagnosable disease. One of the ways our cells work together is they communicate through tiny electrical signals. Think of how a pacemaker sends a little electrical signal to the heart to keep the muscle beating smoothly. Electrodermal testing is a biofeedback device that can measure disturbances in the electrical communication, and these disturbances can challenge our immune system. In my book, Cancer Free, Are You Sure? I explain how this works and how you can work with an integrative physician to use this type of device. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. I was a corpsman in the U.S. Navy many, many years ago, and we went through core school. And after core school, we did an internship. We rotated through the wards. And I remember we'd go in and take people's blood pressure and listen to their heart and so forth, and then write an opening statement on the doctor's orders. And I remember doctors shaking their head. Boy, here's another woman with 16 health problems. Well, wonder if they're malingering. I wonder if they miss their husband. I wonder, folks, once you begin to understand fungus, you begin to understand why you're polysymptomatic, why you have so many symptoms going on. Case in point is a letter on Facebook we received from Kathy, okay? Let's go to that letter. I think this is striking. Doug, I have fibromyalgia, degenerative joint arthritis, neck, shoulder, lower back, knees, plantar fasciitis, dermatitis, herpetiformis, temporomandibular joint disease, tinnitus, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and the list just goes on and on. Okay, Kathy, you're not alone. You're not alone. Many people go to the doctor and then realize 
doc, help me with my skin problem because I have a brainologist to go see. And then I have a gynecologist to go see. And then I have to go to the orthopedic doctor. Oh, and then a dentist because my tooth fell. You're falling apart. And we're told those are several different problems. Could they be one problem that is fixable? That's what I want to beg on today's Know the Cause, okay? So here's what Kathy is saying. This is the polysymptomatic patient. From a.m. to p.m., no matter what I eat or drink, no matter how many drugs or supplements I swallow, no matter how much stress I have, from my head to my toes, I'm sick and getting sicker. I can see right in your home. We have little cameras in everyone's living room, and I can see many of you raising your hands and saying, that's me. Kathy is me. You know what, Doug? I have degenerative disease. My chiropractor tells me it's my back. My esophagitis, esophagitis doctor tells me it's my esophagus. My urologist tells me it's my ear. What's happening to me? As we age, it becomes more and more difficult to launch immunity, right? I take my NSC for that very reason. I want my immune system to stay up. The important thing to realize when you hit your 50s, it's kind of a downhill trend, 60s, a little worse. I'm pushing 70. And uh, I can tell you that I wake up with slight problems. I go out and exercise. I eat differently than guys my age. I feel wonderful. What are we going to do about this? How do you at home know how to monitor this and see if, in fact, you can get better? And it's simple. Think diet. If diet plays a role, I know what you're thinking. Ah, oh, Doug, think diet. Doug is the dietologist. Change or just watch TV and enjoy this. Some of you, this is going to be the impetus you need it. If diet plays a role in your ill health, which food is hindering you from feeling 100%? Build a 14-day diet diary. List everything you eat and include mouthwash, toothpaste, etc. Let me show you what it looks like. I introduced this to so many of Dr. Weekly and Dr. Godshock and so many doctors' patients for breakfast. And when I get up in the morning, right, I take these supplements, I take these medications, and 10, 30, 11-ish, maybe I'll have a bowl of yogurt, a snack. How am I feeling? Make a note. You know what? I do have that throbbing in my left ear. Lunch, supplements or medications, snack. How am I feeling? You know what? I feel better at lunch. I don't feel bad anymore. Breakfast, it was that throbbing. Now I'm not so bad. Okay, then let's go to dinner. Snack, mouthwash, toothpaste before you go to bed. How am I feeling? This was a pretty decent day. Uh, after the ear stopped throbbing, everything was fine. Do you need a neurologist or do you need to look at breakfast? Do you need to look at that bowl of cereal with milk that you ate, the sweet roll, and the cup of coffee? Did that do it or was it dinner? At dinner last night, did you do something you rarely do? You had a glass of wine and you woke up with that throbbing or you woke up with that arthritis or you woke up and you were constipated. Folks, turn back to your diet. I'll tell you one thing. After about 14 to 20 days of doing this diet diary, you're gonna know what turns those symptoms on and more importantly, how to keep them held at bay, how to keep them from coming back. That's funny, when I eat breakfast, I feel sick every day. Or what I had for dinner has me waking up with the worst arthritis you can ever imagine. Do we need to run from ologist to ologist? Or do we need to apply some common sense? Folks, the whole reason you're here is because you eat, right? And what you eat plays a role in your good health or conversely, your horrible health. If you got into fungus when you were early, when you were you know, early on in your life, you may be feeding that fungus now. And this is one way to figure it all out. You ever work out your calves? You know, that hurts after a while, unless you're using a special apparatus that Daniel can teach you all about. Watch this. Hello, everybody. Great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us. So we were talking earlier, what can you do to help, you know, keep you from having knee injuries and ankle injuries and things like that? Well, in my opinion, the best thing you do is to prepare for the uncertain and to prepare for what's inevitable, whether you step off a curb or it's wet one day or you trip over a toy or whatever it may be. 
as long as you're prepared for the uncertain, then you're not gonna have any, any you're not gonna suffer from the negative consequences. So here we are back on our BOSU ball, and what I wanna do is do some simple uh, calf raises. Now, what you'll notice if you have a BOSU ball or if you've seen one or as you're watching me right now, there's a level of uncertainty. I mean, there's a level of, uh, of proprioception, and what that basically means is that I'm overcoming something that is unstable. And my mind, all the while, is saying, ooh, how can I, Ooh, I see what's going on here. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to get better at a simple movement on an uncertain uh, uh, platform, and therefore I'm going to be ready for everything. So the calf, which connects your knee to your ankle, it's going to be the musculature that moves and helps support both of them. So if your calves are strong, which again inserts into the knee, which inserts down into the ankle, you're going to be a whole lot stronger and more prepared for life's events. Now, you don't need a BOSU ball, so we can kick this to the side just for a second. But what I do want to do is focus on going up, and down, simple, up and down. I'm using a ladder today, you can use a table or a wall or anything to give you a level of balance, but I really wanna focus on up and down. What this is gonna do, aside from strengthening your calf, it's also gonna strengthen the supporting ligaments, tendons and muscles in your knees and calves. So, if you are walking on the road, dup, 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 and you trip on something, boom, you can catch yourself because your, your ankle and your knee are prepared because they've already practice this. So one way that you can help yourself to stay out of trouble is to prepare for the inevitable, to prepare for the slips and the slides in life. And if you're ready for them, it's just like retirement. You save for the unexpected, you exercise for the unexpected as well. So back on the BOSU ball one more time, I'm going to grab my ball, which is a little unstable, and I'm going to do some minor pulses up and down. Now, I'd like to think I'm a pretty good athlete, but I'm having trouble staying on because it's difficult. But guess what? Everything that I overcome, every obstacle I overcome, sets me up for success when the intangibles come and visit me. So up and down, up and down. Maybe do two, start with two on day one. Start with three on day two and slowly and incrementally build up until you're strong. And then what you'll notice is the next time that something happens where boop, you trip, you're gonna catch yourself because you're prepared for it. So know the cause, know the solution, and help yourself. We are ultimately responsible for how we feel and how we react. So by preparing for life, you're really gonna help yourself to succeed. Daniel Crouch with a lifestyle moment on Know the Cause. And there you have it, friends. You know what I love about doing this show for 17 years? The show has become a magnet for the brightest people out there. Generally, folks, if you watch this show for a couple of weeks, you know a lot about fungus, whereas medicine knows very little, if anything, about fungus. And are you learning, as I am, that the etiology, the cause, know the cause, the cause is often fungus. It's what you're eating that feeds fungus. It's what you're breathing that starts fungus, right? It's the medications you're taking that might start fungus. You're the smartest audience in the world. I love being with you every day. Do me a favor, tell your friends and family about Know the Cause. God bless you. Bye-bye.